Hello and welcome back to another Dungeons of Eternity video. Today I'm going to give my in-depth take on this game and its future. As you listen, I've put together a video for you to watch as I talk. I've included timestamps to this video, so feel free to skip ahead to whatever topic you might enjoy the most, and hopefully the video does a good job of showcasing all the different realms and quests with some powerful endgame loadouts and gameplay. For some context, I have been playing Dungeons of Eternity since shortly after it was released in October 2023. It took a couple weeks to max out my character and experience most of what the game has to offer, basically completing it. Since then, I've continued to play, improve, and learn a little more than necessary about this game. A few months back, I made a video about why Dungeons of Eternity is the gold standard for virtual reality games. Following up from that, in this video I'm going to reflect and add to that claim with some hopefully better video editing and maybe a little more wisdom. Then to wrap it up, I'll dive more in depth to future plans with the official Dungeons of Eternity roadmap. So even after all the dungeon crawling I've done, I can still confidently say this is my favorite game of all time. Even though my initial hype has worn off, I've continued to love this game every time I hop into it. I think this comes down to a few core features, combat mechanics, co-op multiplayer, and random generation. Then there are some quality of life features that might not be unique, but definitely act as a cherry on top. I'll start with my favorite part of the game, the combat mechanics. They simply feel amazing. It's hard to explain exactly how or why, but I'll make an attempt. For one, your weapons act as if they are physical objects with collisions, they don't phase through enemies like lightsabers. This might seem weird because in reality you only have the weight of the controllers and no physical enemies to collide with, but the controller's haptic feedback combined with the hit sounds and staggering enemies makes it work so well. Little features like daggers and axes getting stuck in enemies to carry parts of their bodies helps top it off. Even then, the melee combat isn't going to be for everyone in Dungeons of Eternity or even virtual reality as a medium. That brings me to another combat method in this game, range combat, which includes throwing weapons, bows, and magic. Throwing weapons in Dungeons of Eternity gave me one of those awe moments that not only sucked me into the game, but into virtual reality as a gaming medium. It feels so good when you throw the perfect arc to hit a skeleton on the other side of the room and watch as it crumbles to the ground. I've hit some crazy throws that would be nearly impossible to hit on my first attempt with my natural skill. So there is aim assist to help, but the player still needs to do most of the work. After playing for a while though, the aim assist starts to seem more like a hindrance than a help sometimes when it targets a pot instead of an enemy. Then there are bows, which are my absolute favorite, along with crossbows. There is no aim assist on them, so hitting those headshots feels so incredibly satisfying. And while I don't have much experience with bows in real life, I love the feel of grabbing the arrow from my back and loading it into the bow. Again, that haptic feedback makes it feel so good. The bows are so realistic in this game that an experienced archer felt the need to share a reddit post about how this game has the best archery out of all VR games. I'll link to that in the description if you want to check it out. Now onto the last range combat method, which is magic. Compared to the rest of the combat, the magic system in this game is a little underwhelming. You might think that they would take advantage of the VR medium and incorporate gesture based magic, but no, they don't. Magic in this game is basically limited to staffs that shoot beams. The effects of the staff beams are all pretty fun, aside from the fireball staff that's basically a weak machine gun. Then there's blocking in this game. My take is that when people, including myself, think of video game blocking and parrying, they think of slow motion right before contact and enemies staggering when the player swings at the right time and angle. This game is not that. Enemies do not stagger from your blocks, only when they're hit. Also if you get too close to an enemy or let them get too close to you, they will attack through your weapon. I think there might be some lack of refinement in the hit or hurt boxes, but I've also thought that maybe we just can't clearly see what's happening from a first person perspective. Maybe it can be unclear being behind a shield or if an enemy attacks somewhere not in our field of view. My biggest issue with blocking is that weapons act as immovable and indestructible objects for both the players and the enemies. Maybe it's another insane layer of complexity for Othergate to address that issue, but at least let me slice through a wooden bow with my legendary glowing sword. The next core feature that makes this game so fun is the co-op multiplayer. 
Considering the social potential that exists with virtual reality, it's at least weird to me that there are countless amazing VR games that limit themselves to single player. I don't know if there's anything special about multiplayer in this game yet, however I'm pretty sure I for one wouldn't have bought Dungeons of Eternity without multiplayer. Sharing experiences with others is almost always more fun than doing it alone. At least having the option to is nice, even if you are a lone wolf. The final core feature is the random generation. While there's still a set amount of rooms, loot, and enemies throughout the dungeons, the random combinations are almost endless and will only improve with updates. Plus, the more weapons you find, the more loadout combinations become possible to test out. Without random generation, I might have stopped playing after claiming to have beat the game at max level 50, but there are still certain weapon models and certain perks that I'm searching for, and other max level players are still searching for their ideal dungeon to save. I prefer to mostly stick with randomly generated dungeons, that way I never know what room or enemy will be around the corner, which does help the excitement persist. Now to top off those core features, there are quality of life features that many players can't go without. I'm sure a whole video could be made to analyze each feature, but I'll simply mention them for now. The music is perfect, graphics are beautiful, virtual arms and hands move realistically with your own, the holographic map is surreal, and you can adjust your character's facial expressions with different hand gestures. There are also four realms, the Underworld, Sandstorm, Vile Halls, and Lava Forge, along with three quest modes, Dungeon Raids, Crystal Hunts, and Soul Harvests, that add some variety to the gameplay. You might notice the variety in the clips of this video, because I did add all the realms and quest modes, however, I personally don't think they add much compared to some others. I should also mention the tutorial. While the tutorial is more of a one-time event than anything, it's super helpful and experiencing the holographic lore is one of those amazing VR moments. Hopefully more holographic lore is added for quests, challenges, or assignments in the future. If all that sold you on the game, hopefully you've got a Quest 2 or Quest 3 to play it on, because there's been no official word about when this game will come to other virtual reality headsets. Also, if you're new to VR, start slow, especially if you're prone to motion sickness. If that means leaving to the outpost lobby mid-game, do it. As for the time commitment, I'd give yourself an hour to complete every dungeon as a beginner, and 30 minutes as you get better. Times will vary depending on your pace and size of the dungeon. While Dungeons of Eternity is already amazing, many of the players are ready for more and lucky for us, so are the developers at Othergate. They created this roadmap a while back showing plenty of exciting upcoming features and content. While there haven't been many references or explanations since its release, I'll do my best to cover each part a little more in depth to finish out this video. Also, Othergate has noted that release timings and plans are subject to change, but here we go. I'll start with the first part that already released in December 2023. The new monster type are the horned enemies called Imps, which added more complexity and difficulty for the Underworld and Lava Forge. I wish they were also added to Sandstorm and Vile Halls, but I get that each realm should be unique. These Imps can run faster than skeletons, tank headshots with their horns, throw weapons, and some can even throw bombs. This was a step in the right direction for future enemy complexity, and hopefully existing enemies will get complexity updates to follow suit. The additional dungeon chambers are beautiful and help enhance the variety in randomly generated dungeons. The chambers added in this update are definitely some of my favorites. The more weapon styles and cosmetics were exciting to see at first, but ultimately didn't add much to the game because they were limited time holiday cosmetics. Even the candy weapons were essentially reskinned axes and fireball staffs. They also took away from the loot potential of regular weapons. Because of all that, the player base ended up complaining enough for Othergate to end the holiday update a little earlier than planned. I hope that if there's another update like that, it's implemented a little differently. I think the surprise gifts to the community were a combination of the Christmas theme plus the limited time snowball PvP minigame added to the outpost lobby. The Christmas theme was cool to see at first, but I became indifferent to it within a week. I did think the snowball fight was fun, but I do wish a new PvP minigame replaced it in the outpost after the holiday event ended. The remaining updates on the roadmap are categorized as features and improvements or new content. I'm generally more excited for the features and improvements, but it's hard to go wrong with new content. 
The closest update to release is the spring and summer 2024 update, which has gotten a few sneak peeks on social media. Also, a few Discord polls might have hinted what updates come first, if it's not one release like the December update, but there's been no official word at the time of this video. As we approach the given deadlines, Othergate will provide clearer goals on their official communication channels. On to the first features and improvements, starting with endgame features and content. There's been some recent discussion in the Discord with the community manager, among other past discussions. It's looking like there might be something like raids along with other content that'll unlock at max level 50. The difficulty options might soon go higher than tier 6. I'm hoping for more advanced and random enemy attack patterns rather than simply increasing stats like health, movement, and attack speed. I think dying from fall damage pits or being eaten by devourers should down players rather than respawning them with full health, at least in higher difficulties. The offline mode might help some players or situations with bad or no Wi-Fi. Maybe someday we'll be able to play as a passenger while traveling, even if that's not the ideal way to play the game. Plus, I think meta software and hardware might need to improve for that to even be possible. Thanks to one of the more knowledgeable players, Prodigasis, now I know what and how important game localization is. Right now, the only supported language in this game is English, but the developers are working to change that. This will be very important as MetaQuest headsets continue to spread across the world. If Dungeons of Eternity is one of the only games that supports their language, it won't be a tough decision to buy it over other games without support, considering how amazing this game is in the first place. The achievement system might require killing a certain amount of enemies, reaching spots on leaderboards, or completing simpler tasks. I'm guessing these would be added to the meta quest achievement system, kind of like how friends list is tied to it, but I think I'd prefer this to be in-game. Both of them. The dungeon assignments and challenges are some of the features that I'm most excited about. I'm thinking the assignments will be something like kill a certain enemy in a certain way to unlock a certain cosmetic or weapon. Maybe the challenges would be a difficult pre-made dungeon that restricts the player to certain weapon types, perks, damage, or exos. A shared leaderboard and achievements for these would also be pretty cool. The arachnophobia mode will help players with arachnophobia so they won't be restricted to sandstorm and vile halls anymore. Next is some new content, starting with more monsters and bosses. This is never a bad thing, especially if they're more complex in their combat patterns. The new weapon styles hopefully aren't just reskinned weapons like in the holiday update, but actual weapon types like gauntlets, long swords, or spellbooks. There are literally hundreds of suggestions in the Discord, and I think almost any of them would be cool to see, but more and better magic is what I'm hoping for. Gesture based magic would make me fall in love with the game all over again. I'm not sure what additional dungeons means, maybe more total dungeons available for every 20 minute rotation. The new dungeon chambers should help keep the game fresh, and I hope more traps and puzzles are a little more complex, randomly generated, or require teamwork for full completion. Some improvements to the old ones would be nice to see too. And I'm not sure what themed cosmetic packs entails, but sounds like some nice variety. Even further down the line, here's the fall and winter 2024 plans, starting with some features and improvements. I have no idea what the new quest mode might be, but expanding upon the core gameplay loop with more quests sounds like a good idea. Adding to that, improved quest modes sounds fantastic because they don't add much variety to the gameplay as of now. Next up, social engagement content. VR is a social platform in theory, so this is super important in my opinion. Another VR game studio, Resolution Games, does a great job in this space, so hopefully Othergate takes some notes. Finishing out the roadmap with new content, starting with more dungeons layouts. I never really thought about a lack of dungeon layouts, but there are sometimes very simple dungeons that you walk straight through. More complexity might add some fun, hopefully not frustration. A single player DLC paid content does sound good. Uh, one of the community polls from Othergate hinted that this might be a campaign mode with a pet that can fight alongside you. I would love this, but not nearly as much as some of the other features and content to come. And it does seem like three content updates might be the standard to come with most updates. The more monsters and bosses, more dungeon chambers, and themed cosmetic packs. 
Then, I mentioned before, but I'm assuming these additional weapon types are actual new types rather than just new styles. I'm hyped for whatever weapons they add, still hoping for gesture-based magic. Then a new playable realm isn't a big deal to me, because the realms seem like more of an aesthetic change than anything. Sure there are some different environments and enemies, but I feel like these need to be more meaningful for the realms to really interest me. Maybe challenges and assignments might add some meaning. I think that covers most of the game without getting into tips and tricks. I'd love to see some thoughts in the comments, and feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I hope to see you in the next one. Peace out.